The concept is that you need creativity to solve problems. And so, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a scientific problem or it's an artistic problem. You need a lot of creativity to be able to come up with interesting, beautiful uh, products. What is, you know, what art and science do, they both create, you know, a description of the world or some, some objects, you know, an image, a music, or a theory. But they have an additional very strong uh, point in common, and the point in common is that they both have to follow some constraints. So Picasso, when he started painting in the Cubist period, it, set, it sets all kind of like a limit of constraints by which he has to create this painting. That, you know, at first sight, it looks like a complete random uh, set of shapes and, 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 and colors. For example, Shakespeare write all these sonnets, and the sonnets again they have this very strong, uh, you know, rhyming constraint that he put on himself to write this this, this works of art. The turn of the century, at the end of the 19th century, um, you know, people were trying to describe the motion of like, electromagnetic waves and so on, and so they had this idea that there was something called the ether, and they basically was carrying the light waves. But then you have an incredibly creative person, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein is saying, okay, I have this constraint, I have to satisfy the experiment. The experiment tells me that there is no evidence of ether. So how can I basically reconcile this observation with all the other observations that I had before? And so then he came to the conclusion that you have an absolute that is the speed of light, but on the other hand, you have to abandon the idea that you have an absolute time and absolute space. And so then you have the special relativity. A few years later, he came up with another amazing theory that is what we call the general relativity theory that basically combines the special relativity with the theory of gravitation. It's beautiful because of the power uh, that he has in explaining so many uh, experimental observations, from you know, the famous apple falling from a tree, to black holes, to the Earth orbiting around the Sun, the Moon orbiting around the Earth. You know, it can be a painting, it can be a, a theory, it can be a, a score of music. You know, it's, it's the same kind of uh, part of the brain that oftentimes we have to use to make great art and great science. It's the same kind of activity, just with a different set of constraints and a different kind of, kind of language. And then the rest is the same. Once you pick your language, then you have, you have the same kind of problem. You have constraints and you have to find creative solutions to problems within those constraints. Another way to say it is that the constraints, they force you to be creative. 